Somebody told me that you want to make a perfect smash burger. You've come to the right place. The main things to think about are fat and heat. Fat and heat. You know, maybe, maybe I'll get a neon sign next to this burger that says fat and heat. The crust is one of the best parts about a smash burger. It's what makes a smash burger a smash burger. You can't have a smash burger without the crust. And to get the awesome crust, you need a fattier blend of beef. I'm talking 70, 30, 80, 20 minimum. You don't have to grind your own meat, but it does give you the freedom to make better burgers. For this burger, I took the trimmings of a filet mignon. I trimmed up a whole tenderloin, and these are the trimmings from that and a prime New York strip loin. So this burger that we're making in this video is ground prime New York strip and filet mignon trimmings. Yeah. Now, like I said, you don't have to grind your own meat. You don't have to get this fancy with it. 80, 20, 75, 25, 70, 30, that's what you need. And then the next thing you need is a hot, hot pan. You don't necessarily need a griddle, okay? A griddle makes it a lot easier. And yes, a griddle is great for smash burgers, but you don't need to, and I'm gonna show you how. Now I'm using hex clad pans. You can use cast iron if you want. Cast iron makes a great sear for a smash burger and it gets really hot and it holds that heat. That's what you need is a pan with a heavy bottom that gets hot and can hold that heat. And when you smash that burger into the pan, that's what creates that sear. But you need that pan to be hot. Fat and heat. Say it with me now. Fat and heat. Fat and heat. Fatty heat. Fatty heat. That's I'm gonna put that for a t-shirt. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna cut all this fanfare and we're gonna get right to making these smash burgers. When my son took the first bite of this burger, he literally just said, whoa. So all we need is fatty beef, a hot, hot pan, an American cheese, and a bun. The rest, you can choose on your own what you wanna do with your toppings and your condiments if you want any at all. You don't have to. That's the beauty of it. You do you. All right, let's go make some smash burgers. Okay, now if you're not grinding your meat, go ahead and skip ahead to the part where I'm weighing out the burger beef. So you can see this beautiful strip loin here. It's a prime strip loin. We're just gonna cut that up into little chunks so that our grinder can grind it up without any hesitation. A little tip too, if you want your beef to grind up nice, put it in the freezer for about 30 to 45 minutes ahead of time, right before you chop it all up. Now I'm starting out with the larger grind, and then after I get it all ground up, I'm gonna switch blades and go with the smaller grind, and that will actually help blend up the beef even more. Now we're gonna weigh out quarter pound patties. I'm doing double smash patties for these burgers because yeah, you should. A quarter pound each, so we're doing half pound burgers total. Now when you go to roll your beef into burger balls, don't smash them super tight. You don't want them super compact balls, all right? You want your balls to be a little more loose inside. <laughs> <laughs> now for my sauce, I'm doing a mayo base. Now I'm doing a little bit of Cholula to add a little bit of heat and acid, and then a little bit of Worcestershire to add a little bit more salty. So we've got salt, fat, and acid going with our sauce. Even if you don't like mayo, I highly recommend you give this a try. Brush your buns with mayo before you toast them. So you can see we've just got a nice layer of mayo right on that bun. Now we've got our pan nice and hot. Put your buns in the pan and push them into the pan. Now be careful because the heat is gonna go right through the bun and possibly burn your fingers. So if you want to use your spatula to push down on the top of the buns, go ahead and use your spatula. That way the heat toasts the mayo all the way through and the entire bun is covered with toast. Like this. Put your balls in your hot, hot pan. Look at them steam. Take a big spatula or if you have a burger smasher, even better. And we're going to smash it right down into the pan. Now it doesn't need to be pretty. The best part about a smash burger is its ugliness is its beauty. A smash burger is not supposed to look perfect. It's just supposed to look amazingly delicious. So don't worry about having a perfectly round or a perfectly even smashed burger. That's not what these are about. These are about grease, crust, and cheese, and that's it. Give them a good salting. Now don't flip them. Walk away for like two minutes. And when you come back after two minutes, if you see little crusties starting to appear on the outside edges of the burger, now it's time to flip. You want to use a pan that can take a metal utensil. I'm using a fish spatula here. It works really well to scrape up all the crispies underneath the burger. Now these hex clad pans are metal utensil safe, but so are cast iron pans. So cast iron pans are wonderful for this reason also. When you flip it, that's the kind of crust you should see. That is magic in your mouth. 
add some American cheese. Now you can add any kind of cheese you want, but a smash burger without American cheese, I don't know, it's just not a smash burger to this guy. I like to add a little fresh ground pepper to the top of the cheese and then add a lid and let them steam. This doesn't take long, it only takes about 20, 30 seconds and that cheese is going to be perfectly, perfectly melted. Now in my case here, I'm making six burger patties. So I'm doing two sets of three. So in between, it's very important that you wipe out your pan because you don't want that excess grease in the pan because you're not going to get a good enough sear on the next round of burgers. Wipe out your pan with a paper towel. Be very careful, don't burn yourself. It doesn't need to be perfect. Just give it a good wiping. Now add your next burger balls to the pan and repeat the process. Oh, there's a little baby burger. Add your salt just like we did before. Wait a couple minutes, use a good sharp spatula to get all those crispies underneath and give them a flip. That crust that you see on your burger is all the flavor that you expect to have when you eat a smash burger. Add your American cheese, little half a piece of American cheese for the baby burger, and let them melt. Oh, this is perfection. Stack them, place them on your buns. Now let's go build our burger. If you're not using any sauce, you can just put them on your bun and eat them up. Is that not the cutest baby burger you've ever seen? I love the taste of raw onion on my burger. It adds another crunch to the burger, and I just love that flavor. If you don't love onions, don't worry, you do you. I like to add pickles too. There's more acid, there's more crunch, and I love every bite to have pickle in it. And now I'm gonna add a little layer of some Coleman's mustard. Now, if you've never had Coleman's mustard, Coleman's mustard is a much more, I don't wanna call it spicy, but it's a very pungent mustard and it packs a punch and it's lovely. Now let's spread our sauce on the bun, place our bun on top of the pickles and here we go. Oh, look at that burger. When you see a burger like that, you know you're gonna have a good day. The melty cheese, the double stacks of beef, the crispiness, the onions, the pickle, the sauce, that is just magical. And we are ready to eat. I'm very excited if you can't tell. It's so incredibly juicy. If you find yourself doing the Frank the Tank dance, you know you've made a great burger. So I hope you've learned a little bit on how to make a perfect smash burger every time. It works every single time. Fatty beef, hot, hot pan, fat and heat, cheese, bun, whatever you want to put on it. It's your day. You make your burgers the way you want to. Just make a smash burger because they are the best. Anyways, I appreciate you. Thank you for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button if you found some knowledge in this video. I hope you did. I'll see you next time.